back from pattern traders. Real quick update on BTC. I'm gonna make this sub five minutes only because I make a detailed video on Monday or Tuesday. Um, I was originally planning on shorting this box over here. Unfortunately for me, I got a little greedy. I was waiting for. I wanted to short a uh, previous yearly VWAP, which is this red bar over here. Um, I didn't do it given the fact that I wanted to, to short the yearly open. Yearly open right now is still sitting at uh, 46.2 ish, 46.1. The previous previous yearly view up is 45.1. Uh, pretty stupid move on my end. So yearly view up is sitting at 40,400 over here. If we do happen to go for one more notch down, I'm pretty confident we're going to go somewhere between 39 and $40,000, low $40,000. I don't know exactly what we're planning on doing, but it doesn't look too hot for us. Any move up is pretty much going to be short-lived in my eyes. If you look at the higher time from the 12 hour and, um, Okay, um, and you look at this consolidation box, so look to the lower low. We are officially at the same level that previously dropped us. So as long as we consolidate above $42,000 and we don't close a daily candle under 42000 or at least a 12-hour, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a little higher. Now, are we going to go make an, uh, a higher high above forty five, forty six, or are we going to get capped out at roughly about $44,000? Eh, it's going to be kind of hard to get above that 44, being honest with you guys. But at least we could hope for an additional poke up sometime on Monday or sometime tonight during the Super Bowl. Overall, oscillator-wise, they're not looking the hottest on the lower time frame. Yeah, we reset majority of them, which is good. So whatever poke up we get, right, whatever poke up we get should lead to an additional reset on the higher time frame. Look at the two-day, for example. Two-day MSTX is about to cross. This was my pretty much main indicator telling us that, hey, we have a possible reversal for at least two months in play. It doesn't mean that we're not going to go something like this, poke up and then come down and then continue and then get rejected over here. All it's telling you is that we have a potential cross in play. Keep this in mind, guys, for those that are constantly wanting to short. Um, we do have one more big dump brewing. Unfortunately, that's why I'm looking to short. Look at the histo. The histo is very important. It's one of, actually, you know what? This is funny. I, I don't trade without the MSTX and the, and the RSX. I never trade without them anymore. The histo turned into my mandatory indicator only because of these black. I'm going to make them red so we could see them better. Okay, so I'll make this light gray. There it goes. Okay. So when you see the histos turning different color like this and like this, two things happen. Volatility is about to kick in hard. And you need to be able to predict that the volatility is to the top side or to the bottom. I personally think it's to the bottom. But it doesn't mean we, don't, we can't get a fake out to the top side. But anyway, this is going to be a pretty fucking big move. This is a two-day volatility histogram activation. Just consider this like a, a signal telling you, hey, Something bad's about something big is about to happen. Now, now as a trader, based on price action or based on any other methods that you know, you have to predict the the, the direction of this volatility. I'm telling you, it's going to be a big freaking move, guys. This is a two day time frame. Now go to the five day time. You can even do the three day. Go to the five day. You don't really see the five day have it, right? So like over here, you could tell that this was coming from a five day to weekly. You don't have it here. You don't really have it here. So. You had your first bar, which means more often than not, you're probably going to get another two or another one at least before a real big breakout on the five day. But the two day is enough to give you at least a 15% or 20% move. Um, so that being said, guys, I'm expecting you within the next maybe two or three two day candles. Hopefully it happens tonight to get it over with. But it's always been this spot over here. Let's see what happens when we get here. You have to take also into consideration the breakdown has yet to be tested. So if you go to, go to the three day, hold on. Let me do it this way. You go to the three day time frame. Um, we filled the insufficiency. There was an insufficiency candle over here. We filled it with the wicks, right? These wicks filled it, but we still haven't retested the actual line itself, which actually falls pretty close to the yearly open. The yearly open is literally that line. So, you know, we have a lot of a lot of things going for us, even though it looks like shit and it looks weak, that we could potentially go for an additional poke up. Um, as long as we don't close any high time frame candle on the 41.9 or $42,000, I think that we will get a poke up. Now, let's talk about the possibility of going down, which is fair. You could potentially just go straight down. 
and freaking die. Because overall, don't forget, this pump up is a bearish pump up. This pump up will lead to a fucking big dump. So I don't even know why I'm scalping this long up like an idiot. I should be looking 100% for DCAing into shorts. So um, on the downside, on the flip side, if you go on to, let's start with the 12 hours so you guys can see. So on the flip side, we're talking about roughly, this is your, yeah, go all the way to this side so you guys can see it. Your level of interest of not wanting to go sub is $40,500. You do not want to get under $40,500. Go to the daily time frame. You said there's a daily order block here, right? Daily order block, more often than not, if you do happen to have a bear pivot, will get tapped. Now, if this thing gets tapped, assuming it does get tapped, right? If this thing gets tapped, you're talking about roughly... You see your three, I know they're all black, but let me make them different colors so you guys can see them. Make this red. Yeah, that's good enough. These are your three areas of interest, personally speaking. These are my three areas of interest. I'm, I'm going to neglect anything under this wick because I don't think we want to break the wick just yet. So I'm going to only focus on 40,400, 40,500, 38,000, 38,1, 38,5. And the most important level in my eyes is that mid to high $35,000 range. I think that this little v reversal that we did over here should not be neglected and ignored because if you look at it from a perspective of hey let's look at the weekly what do we technically do okay what do we do this is a clear deviation of the previous resistance take it even a little bit further take it to the wick there's three levels of interest here on the weekly and it looks like we literally Fake to the downside, tap the two day, the two week OB, right? It's the two week order block. And just completely deviated. So two week order block. Get rid of this line over here. Right? It's two week order block, very clear, right? We tap the two week order block and we completely deviated the structure. Does this look a deviation here? You get rid of this. Let's put it over here. <clears throat> what does this look like to you guys? Just one line. One line on your chart. One line. It's a deviation. You cannot get a cleaner deviation than this. So in my eyes, given that it's a deviation, it doesn't mean that it has to hold, but I'm neglecting the fact that we have to come back into this deviation, which means that we should technically not, for the time being, the time being, break under this area, this little zone over here. We should not break under this 35.9, 35.5 um, area. So I want to see a little bit higher. And then I'm going to short it. I'm going to target roughly between $38,000 to $39,000. That's TP1. TP2 will be somewhere in the 35, 36K range. I don't think the low gets broken just yet. John has a pretty significant dump brewing after that, which I think will be very pivotal with the potential of breaking the main low. Let's see what happens. And don't forget, guys, we do not reverse with only one wick. You do not reverse with only one wick. And so far, we only have one wick. That's not going to happen. If you go to the if you go to the monthly bit stamp, look how the monthly wicks look. We're probably gonna get one more wick. Right? One more wick. So last time we had one, two, three. We only had one and two. And more often than not, you do happen to sweep the first wick. So let's see what happens, guys. Trade safe. And if you want to just zoom out and be an investor, bearish until we get above this block. We've said this many times, bearish until reclaim. You know, everybody knows this. This is like 101. Unless we get a weekly candle above here, we're still we're downtrending, which means that no matter what happens, to range, go up, come down. We're going to keep doing this until we can break above reclaim to go for the top side. Either way, guys, trade safe, and we'll probably chat sometime tomorrow because I'm stepping out for the full day.